In May 1940, Nancy Harkness Love wrote to Lieutenant Colonel Robert Olds, head of the Plans Division of the U.S. Air Corps Headquarters, requesting an opportunity for women to contribute to the war effort in the air. Love had learned to fly at the age of 16 and was known as the Flying Freshman at Vassar College. After college, she continued her career as a test pilot. An advocate for female pilots, she asked Lieutenant Colonel Olds to consider 49 well-qualified female pilots for a new project. She proposed that as the war was ramping up in Europe, women could help transport aircraft from factories to bases in the U.S. Lieutenant Colonel Olds agreed to submit a plan to integrate civilian female pilots into ferrying command. But General Hap Arnold, the head of the Army Air Force, turned it down. Arnold had already promised another famous female aviator, Jacqueline Cochran, not to act on any proposal for women joining the U.S. Army Air Force that did not make them commissioned officers commanded by other women. Jacqueline Cochran had been a famous racer. She'd set records in speed, distance, and altitude. By 1938, she was considered to be one of, if not the, best female pilot in the world. Since the U.S. had not yet become involved in the war, Cochran was volunteering her assistance to the RAF in England, as well as recruiting and training female pilots. Once the U.S. entered World War II, Cochran appealed to Eleanor Roosevelt and Hap Arnold. As pilot shortages in the U.S. grew problematic and Arnold acknowledged the success of female pilots in England, he agreed to approve the Women's Flying Training Detachment on September 15, 1942. At the start, trainees had to be between 21 and 35 years old and have 200 hours of flying already completed. Eventually, the age requirement was lowered to 18 and the flight time to 35 hours. The women began training in Houston, where they were required to undertake 23 weeks of training and log 150 hours of flight time. As time wore on, the program evolved and became more intensive, requiring 30 weeks and 200 hours of flight time. The women would also find new training grounds at Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas. But Nancy Harkness Love hadn't given up on her idea for a female fairing squadron and again appealed to Lieutenant Colonel Olds. In September 1942, at the same time Cochrane's Women's Flying Training Detachment was founded, Nancy Harkness Love founded the Women's Auxiliary Fairing Squadron. The Women's Fairing Squadron was created under Air Transport Command. Female pilots were recruited for the program. They were required to have a commercial license and 500 hours of flying time to join. Once admitted, women in the squadron were assigned to ferry aircraft and trainers across the U.S. Already well qualified, many women in Cochrane's detachment flew for the fairing squadron. On August 5, 1943, the two organizations merged and the Women's Air Force Service pilots were born. The group was commanded by Nancy Love and was led by the first class of Cochrane's pilots, better known as the guinea pigs. Training continued at Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas, setting out new classes of female pilots. Women lived in wooden barracks called bays and lived up to six to a room. The female pilots were required to undertake the same rigorous primary and advanced training as the male Army Air Corps pilots. Over 25,000 women applied to join the WASPs, and a little over 1,000 were accepted into the program. WASP duties included ferrying planes, towing gunnery targets, and transporting equipment and personnel. They were stationed at over 100 bases throughout the U.S. and delivered thousands of planes. While the WASPs never saw combat, the planes they towed were used in live ammunition practice, and even fairing flights could be fraught with dangers that resulted in injury and even death. But their service was critical, freeing up male pilots for combat on the front. In June 1944, Hap Arnold sought to designate the WASP as official military members, giving them long overdue recognition for their contributions. Cochrane had always been an advocate that they would be a separate corps headed by a woman like the WAC, Waves, and other military groups. But concerns emanated throughout the process. Accusations of high cost, threats to male civilian pilots, and other issues complicated the appeal. Congress ultimately denied the application in a narrow defeat, citing the nearing of the end of the war among other reasons. In December, General Arnold declared the disbandment of the WASPs, and the official last day of their service would be marked as December 20th, 1944. Hap Arnold spoke about the event by saying, The WASP has completed its mission. Their job has been successful. But as is usual in war, the cost has been heavy. 38 WASPs have died while helping their country move toward the moment of final victory. The Air Forces will long remember their service and their final sacrifice. Despite their service, WASPs did not receive military honors or veterans' benefits. They would not receive their veteran status for another 30 years, in 1977, one year after Nancy Harkness Love had passed away. In 2009, 66 years after their foundation, the WASPs were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for their service in World War II. Fewer than 300 remaining members were alive to receive the honor.